case uh, someone requested me to cover Barnes and Noble, took a simple B and E D. And um at last Friday's close at fifty eight cents. Um uh we've had one heck of a week for uh for Barnes and Noble as it actually ran a good if we can measure this real quick from this point. About wow at about almost 700% um, from uh, the 16th. What is this? Oh, from, uh, okay, so from the 16th to the 22nd, which is right here. And um, that's quite a crazy swing. Um, we're, we're, I mean, I mean, when it comes to such a small, micro cap stock as uh Barnes and Noble at that price of uh fifteen cents to dollar thirty five. I mean that's that's a lot. And um you can see here um came from this gap a gap down from uh six seventy we could say seventy cents gap all the way down to that point at like eighteen, nineteen cents. Gap down again and then all of a sudden we had an influx of volume here just pumping the crap out of uh, Barnes & Noble. I didn't know what that was all about. Um, I do know that there was uh, some a filing, I think, uh, it had something to do with like a rights offering. Let me see if there's anything here in the news. I'm doing this on the fly, so I, I really don't know what was happening. Um, okay, so I'll read this one by Dow Jones Newswires. Oh, okay, so Barnes & Noble Education expects gross proceeds of $95 million of new equity cap through $45 million uh, RTS offering and uh, $50 million new equity investment. Let me see. Okay. See if there's anything like in detail, but... I don't think there is anything in detail, sure. But it it they did also post some type of earnings here. Fall of 2024 revenue 1.5 1.57 billion dollars, so um, that's pretty decent. Uh, let's look at the specs. <laughs> let's look at the stats. Uh, next earnings report in 29 days. The volume from yesterday, I mean from Friday, was 20.94 million. Average twenty six point forty nine. Uh, market cap is only thirty point eighty three million, and the shares flow is thirty six point eighty three million. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's considered. I, I believe that's considered a small or micro cap. I, f I forget the range, and how much um, to be considered a small cap or a micro cap or any of those caps. But um, you you do your research. You, you you'll know, um, and um, as recently too as well, I think they did get a a rating for a hold. Even though the rating price target says I believe seventy cents, but yeah, it's neutral right now. The technicals and neutral on the analyst rating. So let's we'll just see the forecast right now. So one says hold. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really say like the actual price target there, but anyways, um, we'll just look at it from a technical standpoint and how this did. This is the daily chart. I'm gonna move this to the side and actually expand this, so you could see uh, take a closer view of what's going on. You can see this was uh, overbought. Here as of um, Wednesday, the 22nd, when we reached that high of uh, 135, I believe. Then we just came down, back down here, see uh, Barnes & Noble selling off. Uh, pretty much cooling off from the big rally that it took. The almost 700% run for a couple of days. And now we're at this point where we're trying to establish, as it seems that it's trying to establish a bottom here. Um, we have this level here at... 53 54 cents this this touch point here 
So you still got this gap to come down and try to fill back down. So if it holds above 53, 54 cents, then that's uh, that's a good sign here. You can establish the bottom and start to rebound from there. I'm gonna go to the four hour chart real quick. And you can see that actually happening more clearly. But you can see here the Elliott wave and the line here, it's actually transitioning to from bear, from bullish to bearish. So if this if this is what it's showing, I'm pretty sure that along with the RSI, it's trying to cool off some more and probably going to come down. If it doesn't hold 53, 54 cents, it will come down and break down to the next level support around. I mean, it could be it could be anywhere around 32, 33 to like. 40 I'd say the max like 45 cents around that range but anywhere like anywhere within this this box that I put here now it's not as accurate and this is all hypothetical as I like to call it hypothetical TA but um um this only I, I would say that it, it would be considered a healthy pullback and then if it rebounds from here, then we would have perhaps potentially another round for this to actually, you know, create some more moves to the upside. You know, from that point to where it was before, it would take a good 135 to 140% move to the upside in just a few days. You know, pretty much this week, you know, you would need to see that. And that influx of volume coming back in and um i mean i'm not sure what reaction it's um, gonna have with the whole rights offering and the 900 million uh shares um well yeah that that could be a good thing too as well when it comes to um preventing the company from bankruptcy and stuff like that if it's even in within that uh scenario but um so far um technical and technical standpoint i think this is um it's going to take some time but you know from where we we're looking at now on the 45 minute chart um this uh, only confirms more of that bottom that's trying to establish and the rebound that's possible we look at the Elliott wave here, it looks like it's been trying to come back up. And RSI too, so it's like it's like long term kind of bearish, but short term it looks more bullish. I know some people can get a little confused because of that. But other other than that, as as you know, the more I go to the shorter time frames, the more you see this um this playing out here and uh, potentially looking for this as the bottom above 53, 54 cents. And uh, from here, you see that, you know, some consolidation happening there. And who knows, maybe this will play out and we will, you know, try to break over again and try to retest um, 75 to 80 cents around that range if bullish, but if bearish. In my own opinion, this could come back down to 40 cents and below, like maybe between 30 to 40 cents. And from there, try to establish a bottom. But, um, you know, I've, I've, um, I've heard a lot. And uh, in terms of um, Barnes & Noble becoming the next uh, the next short squeeze, um, if I, I'm, I'm hearing that as, as speculation, which is pretty interesting. Um, what, what's also interesting here um, is the cost of borrow fee. I noticed that um, here it was around 4 to 5% for a while. And all of a sudden, on the 24th near, uh, what is this? Um, okay, like 6.30 in the morning, they had reported that the cost of borrow fee from Friday was 86.37%. So that's a huge spike. That's a huge spike here in uh, cost of borrow fee, which is low-key 
pretty crazy. And that only leads me to believe, in my opinion, that this that this could um, spark some more interest in, in more investors here to keep an eye on Barnes & Noble. I mean, it's just, it's just me just guessing, you know, what would happen. But um, this is uh, this is pretty crazy stuff, and I love Barnes and Noble. I wouldn't want to see Barnes and Noble uh, um, bankrupt or you know any of that stuff. It's like my childhood place. After high school, I would go and uh, read some Japanese manga with some friends. So a lot of memories there. But other than that, we'll uh, look quickly here on the options chain. And um, if you notice here, the wait, I think I have another website up here. Hold on, do I? No, I don't. I think I closed it. But yeah, um, if you notice the the options chain here for the 20, June twenty first expiration date, um, you can see that um, the fifty cent strike and the dollar strike is among the highest volume. Um, but the highest in open interest is the two dollar strike at thirty nine thousand seven hundred four, with a volume of a thousand seven hundred twenty three. But the highest volume here is of the dollar strike, four thousand seven hundred sixty four. So this can change, especially coming to uh, Tuesday's uh, trading day, uh, coming back from uh, a three three day weekend because uh, yesterday was Memorial Day, and uh, I'd like to thank. Uh, all the soldiers out there and all the veterans uh, for their service by the way so but um, that being said yeah this would be a, a great start for the Memorial Day uh, from the Memorial Day weekend and um, perhaps we can see something um, a potential for Barnes & Noble to create a comeback here uh, as we look at the other chain uh, the July 19th not so much volume um, October 18th it's uh, less January 17th um, nope it's just more concentrated on the, July, uh, the June 21st um, expiration date so perhaps this could uh, ignite something um, on the put side uh, yeah, it looks like the call side is winning over the puts, but uh, none of this is financial advice, by the way. And um, not to say to buy or sell, or do anything with your investments because you're your own decision maker of your uh, money and your investments, as long as you're playing it safe, of course, all the time. Um, whichever way you go, you're here to make that money ball roll. Um, but I guess if that's um. Good information for y'all um, show some love for this video and and even though I'm kind of talking like this is because it's midnight so soon I'm about to head to bed I just wanted to do this quick video because uh, somebody here by the name of uh, I think he is risen uh, yeah he is risen had uh, had asked me if I was gonna be covering Barnes & Noble but uh, yeah, from time to time we can cover it um, tomorrow. Um, here's my channel, um, so feel free, show some love, hit subscribe, and um, yeah, so, uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens after that. So, Barnes and Noble lovers, um, it's time to uh, attack, and um, everyone else. Um, Hope you all have a wonderful week. Um, much uh, success. Best of luck. And uh, go get them bags. All right. This is uh, Lion, Lion of All Trades signing off. Peace out. Uh, and uh, take care.